The next piece of self-defense that is very important is the hit. Again, if I'm in my safe presence and my patient were to come at me to hit me, I could easily get out of the way. However, if I'm not in my safe space and my patient is coming to hit me, what I want to do is put my arms up to block it and get out of the way. We'll do that again in a little bit faster motion. And I would get out of the way. and my patient is coming to hit me, what I want to do is put my arms up to block it and get out of the way. The most important part was I didn't get clipped first. You know what I mean? Pow! And we win that by having our hands up and open. Double tap, push up. Space created, now you're going patient or attack. Uh, double tap into bent arm check. He throws a shot, I have double tap. Look, I already have this arm here. If I advance in between his feet and simply turn my arm in the right direction, he goes. I can now take off this, this way and be out of there. And my patient is coming to hit me. What I want to do is put my arms up to block it and get out of the way. He throws a Double tap. Look, I already have this. And my patient is coming to hit me. What I want to do is put my arms up to block it and get out of the way. That when you've got two hands connected, you're going to always move slower. Want to prove a point for just a second? So put this down for a second, put your hands up and open, and uh, you're just going to parry. So if I throw it towards your head, you're just going to smack it out of the way. See the difference? Big difference, folks. When your two hands connected, but go ahead and pick that back up again. And hit me if I do anything. <laughs> Now, before you go too far on this, what I'd like for you to understand is something that's really important with this is that there's four things that can happen if a person's actually trying to punch you. If this person's throwing his punch and he's going to blast me in the nose, boom, that's the first thing that can happen. That's an option that we don't want to allow to take place. Number two is, as he begins to throw a shot, I can hit him before he hits me. That's highly unlikely. The next thing is he throws his shot, I can parry it or block it. And then the last part is, as he's throwing a shot, I can just not be there. So we're really going to work on those two things there, which is not being there and parrying or blocking that skill whenever or strike when it was coming in. So to start this off, all we're going to do is parry, and we're going to work it together with a partner. He's going to reach out and touch my nose, and I'm going to parry it now. I'm going to touch his, and that's all we're going to do. It seems really silly in the beginning, but it all makes sense as we go. We're going to change. Sometimes you change a little bit of the speed. Maybe I change the look. It's a poke in his eye. It's a grab to the throat. It's a slap to the face. It's a grab his hair. <laughs> Okay, get a partner and practice just the parry. And my patient is coming to hit me. What I want to do is put my arms up to block it and get out of the way.